for doing the web cam based eye tracking anyway that's what it uh, looks like so you can actually see the pupil pupils are being detected okay but we want to improve it a bit and show how the processing is done so we want to show exactly uh, what was done to the image to achieve uh, that and by and by the way yeah feel free to interrupt with uh, by providing feedback uh, after checking the website the main site currently we are developing this uh, in addition to the webcam based eye tracking we're also looking at uh, public biomedical data sets there's some uh, well currently the website is actually those tools are using um, ieg.org uh, data it's pretty much accessible for anyone uh, a lot of the other data is uh, synthetic so the ecg is synthetic at the moment but yes we we might uh, look up uh, real uh, data in one of those uh, databases currently just as a warm-up uh, let's do continue with the eye tracking development so we had the html file obviously we're using uh, t uh, tensorflow js and the uh, blaze face model this is instead uh, instead of uh, media pipe in python so we actually had the same code uh, um, another eye tracker running in python uh, using media pipe and uh, tensorflow as well no something else i don't remember but now we're trying to just make it lighter and run it all in front end javascript alone yeah you see the eye tracking especially on uh, this eye is not great and um, we ask the bot in a sec to explain how the detection is actually being made might just do the html the flask we we don't expect any changes to it for now the html will eventually have a description at the bottom of the page and let's do let's do the main javascript code just uh, removing um, redundant uh, comments i wonder if uh, programmers will just stop commenting code uh, considering you can just pop it into an llm and it will explain it for you into gpt or whatever else uh, you're using right so let's pop this uh, main js as well yeah we have this uh, line at the end of the prompt this is the end of this file and then we also where are we currently at main js yes yeah, so we also have um, the star css we'll worry about it later um, drawing utilities face detection face model the face detection is a bad name because it also does um, the eye tracking we have the face model that's finding the face main js might as well pop it at the top there obviously the video stream yeah we don't expect any changes to that the face model is working okay what we want to focus drawing utilities is fine uh, what we want to focus is this face detection that does the eye tracking yeah the name is a bit misleading when you they call it eye tracking but uh, it's actually pupil tracking isn't it because you wanted to a uh, move with your the label to move with your pupil okay so we want to do face detection as well assumes landmarks is the right and landmarks one is the left eye that's okay doing 20 percent eye width is 20 percent of my face is it actually based on some sort of, <laughs> of some sort of physiological uh, studies i don't know might leave that comment 
and the eye height is 10 percent of the face height um it should be bigger and smaller i don't know if it's yeah my face is all you know this oriented um but yeah yeah with the de detection is not great well let's sort one eye at a time or something <laughs> we'll go from it, even though it should be the same they should be the same and we have a bunch of stuff in the console as well don't we yeah that's okay this then to main js i want to do face detection yeah we don't need that i know that's working okay consider removing this in production why would i remove this in production i don't know <laughs> right it's kind of worse and it's the same isn't it uh, yeah, I like that one better. Okay, let's start with that. See what it says. We've been talking a lot already. Okay, how about I'll provide the rest of the code and eventually we want to display the whole detection uh, pupil detection process on the front panel and uh, any magic numbers to be controllable from the front panel as well also men mention a calibration procedure again we would like to add maybe another canvas that shows the eyes in it as separate to the face with the grayscale image to show how the pupil detection is uh, being done exactly and also can you go over the code and list any magic numbers we want eventually to add them as controllers on the front panel yep yeah how do we do that let's put a to-do list in uh, uh, below the page yeah the eye tracking results is sounds good can detect blinks can we still detecting the pupil even when i close my eyes okay this will need a lot of work i mean yeah if i close my eyes this way it says right pupil not detected left pupil not detected but when i just close my eyes it's still detecting a pupil like what I guess. is it distance between the eyes or yeah now we have a uh, right now we have that was the original thing that was just to overlay the one on top of the other so it was replacing my eyes putting them in a, a separate canvas and one of those making sure that the canvas yeah it does this funny business just keep uh yeah wanna also uh, populate the eye tracking results so there's counting blinks and things yeah currently it's not working i still like this thing if it was this uh, ah yeah this thing is detecting another uh, another face when i do this on my head so that's not not great not ideal yes yeah, so if you have any suggestions as to how to improve this uh, do let me know this silly comments a work in uh, CSS and now it will should do all this uh, overlaying business yeah we'll probably do another canvas that shows the grayed out stuff can we add an option on the HTML page to split the video and the canvas and by default have them overlaid one on top of the other we still need to make sure the text uh, is uh, below the canvas and the video footage yeah a couple of things quite a few actually we were kind of left the gpt4 behind we wanted to for it to keep up as well okay there are a couple of problems the split view toggle doesn't actually do anything the idea was that 
we will have the result the canvas overlaid over the video footage and uh, have a toggle switch to separate between them the other problem is the eye tracking results are actually not uh, displaying any values i assume that's a placeholder we do have the values in the uh, console log but we would like some of it to be displayed uh, on the front page as well yes now that split view toggle button does work but that uh, it's not working correctly yeah we already have that don't we oh no we actually okay so we have if uh, right pupil we join the pupil and uh, also inserting the text a fixed point okay right so we have the coordinates there they actually seem to work yeah if we have no face it will just um, not change the values so by default it's not a split view um, but, 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 uh, it's moving up the description it meant to be moving the canvas yeah the eye blink will need a separate function for it it's not working at the moment why is it only true false should we yeah we could count count the number of blinks but yeah we don't have that functionality let me clear console for a sec yeah maybe we stop yeah the console spell console and get rid of them because we actually troubleshooting something else now still have the prediction yeah this one get rid of a comment out yes that's working when we have a canvas multiple readback operations using get image data faster with central to true and uh, not sure what that means and a good thing about having small files is that can actually troubleshoot better yeah copilot is uh, using gpt4 but uh, the warning message you're seeing suggesting that you said the uh, will read frequency attribute to true on your canvas if you're going to be calling get image data multiple times this can improve the performance of readback operation well it sounds important incident attribute when you get the context of the canvas here's how to do it so in the main js you should update the line where you get the context of the canvas to look like this show exactly what it does but okay is that the warning went away the split screen what show we have video container and no it doesn't seem to have a context of uh, the previous prompts so that's the big difference between uh, gpt4 and github copilot right so now we do have video container yeah default option and yeah, now it's different okay now they're doing them side by side hey that's not exactly what i meant i meant they're meant to be overlaid or not yeah okay it's still not working correctly they meant to be default overlaid the canvas meant to be overlaid over the video by default and when you click split view it should split them whichever way side by side or top to bottom depending on the size of the screen okay, it's very apologetic i don't know if it's a good sign or not probably not yeah we want the default state to be overlaid yeah so they do look overlaid yeah that's and when we hit split it's split okay github copilot actually does useful stuff how good is that okay now the bottom the split view button oh no <laughs> okay <laughs> the text oh come on still messed up it's working okay to begin with 
Yeah, probably want the split button at the top. Yes, we have the split button at the top. The results of the eye tracking are overlaid. And we can do this. However, when we go back and tick it, it doesn't go back to the original view. Main.js. So we have it overlaid. Okay. Right. Um, it's a bit odd, but it's uh, better. Default is um, split view turned off. So it is overlaid. So you can uh, split it that way. Yeah, it's a bit unusual, but uh, it's okay. We can move on, I think. Go check the site. Let me know what you think. Or pop your comments in of what I'm currently doing wrong. Surely you have a lot of opinion. Hey, where is the graying out bit? Can you explain how the eye tracking works? I meant the pupil tracking. Yeah, we have the video stream, face detection, eye detection, the pupil detection. That's the one we are after. It's not trained on anything. That's bull. Okay, can you explain how the pupil detection works with links to the relevant code? Okay, we have the detect pupil function. Why is this not clickable? Does it need to finish uh, generating, does it? Yeah, we have that. We have the eye detection, then we have the images extraction, and uh, then we have the the functions like likely. Why is it likely? Why not specific? Pupil detection function returns object darkest point representing it's actually wrong coins to use the major yes that's okay it's just a guess yeah okay, can you do it again now you have the code i don't know why it uh, does this uh, funny thing where it will say i don't have access to the code yeah the darkest point detection the takes blah 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 yeah, it turns it into grayscale and just take the red channel. What well, doesn't make any sense. Since it's grayscale, we can just take the red channel. Is that what it's doing? Yeah, what another um, grayscale, darkest point. Uh, how do we do this? I think that's the darkest point. Darkest point is not a function. Hey, oops, made the. Yeah, this is why you need a proper version control. Hey, let's check. Yeah, we were by mistake my modifying track tracking copy. This was modified Monday, so this is old, and this one is the. Let's make sure it's working correctly. No errors. Yeah, we can split or overlay, which processing edge, okay. doing edge detection, pupil causation. Wow, what were they doing? I meant in the JavaScript. Yeah, that's what we uh, had before in Python. Unfortunately, with uh, GitHub Copilot, you can just chat to it uh, like a normal person, or as if it's a person. It will only essentially each prompt is uh, is individual. Yeah, this message is too long. Uh, Three fifty lines of code. That's why I was uh, getting rid of uh, a comments and the like. Yeah, we need those for if we load it into GPT four, so it knows where while one file starts when it ends. That's right. That's kind of obvious. Yeah, we don't need this. Yeah, we do want to keep this odd um, comment. That that's the code that we will be going over there, converting to grayscale and stuff, and trying to improve the eye tracking. Or well, let me know if it's ready for publishing. I'm happy to share to make it available for you to play with. It's the radius of the eye. I need adjustment. 
Edges. Yeah, I'm bringing in. Hmm. What's the structure of the files? Where's tracking JS being called? It's not in main. Okay, now this is super weird. Wait a sec. That looks like didn't have the tracking originally. Tracking JS. I stuffed up the whole structure of this project. If can it say a get copal to explain this file? I don't actually need this. I'm not using this. Oh, stuffed it up. That's the one uh, that we are uh, that we do not need anymore because we split it into yeah, this two can be moved out we're not actually using them to know how in back face detection draw units face model yeah the pupil detection is happening here yeah, and this is only like 80 90 lines of code yeah, it has two functions extract eye region and detect pupil sounds legit the extract eye regions gives two coordinates for right and left eyes that's working fine and then detect pupil is a bit more complex <laughs> you bet uh, well maybe it shouldn't maybe it doesn't have to be trans the coordinates to integers retrieves the image data converting each uh, pixel into grayscale so that's what we would like to um uh, to see how is that actually happening yes it's finding uh, darkest uh, pixels in the roi in the region of interest yeah two things we want to be able to change that threshold uh, what magic numbers are used in the code so those kind of make sense you have the height its percentage of the face 0.2.1 and um, staking so it's scaling as well so that's good in the deck the um, pupil function 100 is used as a threshold determining whether the pixel is considered dark or not right and it's looking at coefficients and that's interesting yeah do i need those as um input parameters so do we do we need those as controllers on the page I'm thinking the darkness threshold to begin with and yeah, this is obviously worse when going higher was a uh, 50 to begin with yeah this this size working better the other one is off so i don't know is it just my eyes oh yeah that's why i probably should just release uh, this tool can we it's doing this for the each eye isn't it what data no to log how's it yes yeah, so that that's the problem with this uh, algorithm i thought it's only searching for a circle i don't think it does yeah it just does the grayscale stuff it doesn't do the circle what's called the hue hue transform finding circles and no it doesn't look like we had it in another version of the code yeah just finding uh turning into grayscale and finding the darkest uh, point for the pupil detection but yes we would like to add another stage now this jumping with uh, right or left pupil not detected so 100 was better in that sense right so we have a threshold of uh, 100 and we have this gazillion of uh, grayscale data points yeah like 330 it's quite a bit isn't it yeah like 500 uh yeah might uh, pop all those 
uh, onto the screen as um, input variables so we can adjust these values we have some uh, default that work uh, better for me darkness threshold sounds scary ah and the hue transform yeah that should prevent it by finding a pupil when the eyes are closed that's what we could use for detecting a blink as well if there is no circle then there uh, must be a blink type of scenario let's just take another quick break if you haven't checked bionicchaos.com it's a good time to do so because then you can provide your feedback live as well okay, can we look at the rest of the code uh, don't worry about the well maybe do worry no the display is okay now the front page is working is working fine and uh, now we uh, in the past no, don't remember, I think it, in the Python code we had a hue transform that will detect the circle within the eye. Currently, just doing the grayscale. Uh, so, we might uh, look into bringing that back. Also, we would like the, to list all the magic numbers in the code and uh, uh, place them as uh, variables input variables on the front page uh, i need help i need your help to do that yes we have all these magic numbers in the code is a problem the uh, is way off now pretty sure i clo i closed the blinds it's way off again we we would like to avoid transferring to the server can you actually populate the suggested functions particularly the hue circle transform another thing we could do is uh, currently it seems to be being thrown off by the eyelids so it's detecting the the dark uh, regions uh, looking at the eyelids as well uh, can we improve that so yes essentially some sort of algorithm that finds a white uh, the white of the eye and the, the pupil uh, within it uh, somehow avoiding eyelids 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 <laughs> that's right and can you also recommend the what the controls of the magic numbers that we have in the code should be placed as uh, controllers on the front panel uh, specific to the pupil detection the obvious candidate will be the darkness threshold which uh, seem to be impacted by the amount of incoming ambient light uh, here is the code again just in case we'll have trouble integrating this code wouldn't we they were not receiving any errors in uh, javascript which is good should we i don't know let me know what you think do we need do we want to control how the pupil detection is uh, happening where would this hue circle transform go we need a separate file for it yeah we eventually want to get rid of all this uh, magic uh, numbers ah oh, this is really not cool so i had this shortcut in uh, obs yeah i just realized it was uh, messing up my code yeah, with adding M's, I added like a shift M uh, shortcut for muting my mic. Okay, now I'm using control shift for muting, unmuting my microphone, but then it's also loading something in uh, Visual Studio Code. <laughs> but at least it's not 
the hiding uh, text to the code. Yeah, you can't win with uh, shortcuts, can you? It's already like a yeah, control shift M, but should be pretty safe. But it is uh, used in uh, Visual Studio Code for something. I can have a proper decent shortcut for it, so just use the mouse. Yeah, that's obviously not the full implementation of the code. Uh, let's see, just a second later, storing votes or circle parameters and what that function will look like. It's a good question. For each edge pixel, vote for all possible circuits that could pass through it. That has a radius range as an input. Yeah, it's a bit odd. It doesn't sound right. She will just stick to the darkest region. I mean, it's working. It's not working too badly. Yeah, the problem with this uh, JavaScript and the implementation that yes, obviously, we can do much better in Python. The main reason, I mean, I could probably do both. Yeah, we currently set up. Uh, we currently don't have any uh, backend server-side uh, processing. I want those uh, magic number variables to be outside the function. Let's worry about the eye detection later. Do the... Yes, these two can go here. The other two can go there. Can we... What if we just say update? Right, well, it's actually a uh, did okay. Yeah, it's the I width and the high height ratio. Actually, the width. No, it should be okay. Yeah, that's what just trying to take control over any magic uh, numbers that we have. And that's doing uh, finding the grayscale, the green coefficient there, have the blue coefficient as well. Eventually, we're thinking adding them as uh, input parameters on the front page for you to play with. So here we're trying to use uh, what the GPT-4 generated as prompts for GitHub Copilot. So it's actually it does the coding. Let's see if it does any better. It's same using this Kenny Edge Detector. Is it something? Do we need to add like a library for it or something? It's suggesting an extra function. So this is from uh, uh, GitHub. And this is from uh, GPT-4. Uh, we can try having the hue circle transform to be... to have an option to turn it on and off. See what difference it makes. Yeah, that was the slightly different yeah i like the second one better in terms of its uh, inputs uh, these parameters edge threshold and radius range should be coming from the front panel so ideally we'll have uh, what's that hue circle transform on or off option uh, okay, I need I need your help uh, integrating the code. Can you generate the full code? Which parts of the code needs uh, updating? Can you generate full functions? Update the HTML and the main JS as well. Uh, that's a good suggestion. By the robot knows what it's uh, talking about. Its function is not being used, so in theory not be getting any errors jump check with control f5 right we do want to uh, add some we want some controls the uh, detection parameters don't have to be updated on click today uh, where do where do we want the controls can this be a different button yeah I like a button like that uh, the nitty-gritty and why 
I'm getting ads for dog food. What are the label? Fly labels. Uh, are they? Oops. Let's just say here they are. Yeah. For that uh, later, remove this leaf view in there. Uh, right. Parameters are not doing anything, are they? We also have the red, green, blue coefficient coefficients. This is main JS updating parameters. This is the end of main J main JS. That's fine. We have any issues? Must have a lot of issues with this code. Uh, we do not have a DOM DOM element. Uh, we need to restructure the code filters on uh, well I never use any of those but uh, yeah that makes your eyes uh, bigger but this is uh, an illusion it just uh, selects a different uh, region of interest that's all now that will be the default option and the threshold doesn't work yet split view works yeah, if you're on a wider screen, it will uh, place them side by side. So that's okay. You have the left to right uh, eye position. We don't have a blink detector yet. We don't have a case direction yet. We will improve this description. What, what is it currently says? Yes, we obviously don't need a reset button or anything. We just, uh, just hit F5, resets the uh, ratios. It's working okay. Now we need to modify the darkness threshold to work as well. Then to detect the pupil, we have a darkness threshold as an input now. Ah, and also these three coefficients red, green, blue, because they affect the, uh, the grayscale uh, detection thing can we ask a uh, gpt 3.5 right so i assume these numbers are these numbers uh, commonly used or do i need an option to adjust them slightly uh, how about specifically for eye tracking and uh, pupil detection that uh, uses a grayscale uh, conversion of a video feed. Um, are this, uh, do these numbers sound legit or do I need an option to modify them? Uh, right. It's funny how you know, when I close my eye, it can still detect pupils. Well, I can't see that, obviously. <laughs> it's a two. Uh, print screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, not ideal uh, not ideal at all can you detect what the problem with this uh, tool might be and suggest any solutions but it's currently not used that's okay now the split should work again and that's working the detection I don't actually want to use this function. Uh, we don't need that. We need this. Split toggle works. We eventually want to get rid of this function. We have, where is it? Uh, detect pupil. Yep, we have this too. Yep, now it's using a uh, darkness threshold as well. Darkness threshold is. Uh, getting element on the front panel Let's see if it works split works the eye height ratio works uh, right this is working as well this is actually quite nice because you can how come it's still working yeah so yeah if this one it will become a uh, super sensitive so it should be so it's actually working pretty well. Uh, quite happy with that. 
Oh, the split, uh, the split view. Uh, let's see if we. Okay, we don't have any errors. That's okay. So we have the eye width ratio, the eye height ratio, the darkness ratio. Oops, that's the height. Yeah, this one actually. Anyway, so that the section shows you uh, how well it's working or not. So it's converting the pixels to within that region into grayscale. It's pretty good. Don't think that number should be zero. And it should double check uh, that number for darkness. Ah, minimum is 50, maximum is 150. Steps of one. And default is uh, 100. Yeah, we adjusted the eye. It was pretty decent. It uh, teaches you quite a lot. It taught me quite a bit. That's for sure. So hopefully it will do the same to you. The pupil was also taking a uh, red coefficient, green coefficient and uh, blue coefficient. But that's, that's only to do with how the grayscale conversion is being made. Yes, yeah, so you can choose your parameters, whichever work best for you and uh, Bob's your uncle I might need that a separate adjustment for left and right eye but yeah it's looking pretty good so I'll uh, see you next time hopefully next time we can do one of the other tools